we're going to continue building on what we started in the first video uh, using mixable animations we're going to bring in two cameras and also show you how to blend two animations so here's a scene that i brought in and what i'm going to do is show you how to clean it up a little bit um you know this is taken from a free market asset and i opened the level and dropped my character in and uh, if you look in the outliner i have quite a few things i don't really need that i could clean it up you know it's good practice to get your students to you know clean up the scene before they do anything uh too fancy like all these video renders which are nice they could use them maybe but probably not and probably they're built for a game and they're not even virtual production so really it's just better to get rid of all the cameras get rid of all the sequences that are there and take a few minutes to look at the scene okay there's some objects in the way uh, what do i not want to do stage the scene move some of the objects and see there's all these like code elements they're kind of in the way so hit the g key and that'll get rid of all of them all right so if you want to make them come back uh, the, the, these spheres probably won't exist anymore in unreal engine 5 i think i think they've changed how that works but i could be wrong uh, so let's continue cleaning up this scene to get ready to do our animation All right, so I'm going to go to my cinematics folder that I created in the last video, and I'm going to create a new sequence. So right click under cinematics under level sequence and give it a, a distinct name so you know what it is. And if it's the second sequence, probably just call it two. I'm going to double click on this and we're going to drag our character. So if the best way to do is select it, click and drag it right onto the timeline and it'll appear in there. That's really the fastest and most efficient way to do it. Clicking under animations, you'll see all the animations you've already brought in. Now, if you haven't brought any in for in the last video, you need to bring them in. The way I showed you, go back to the previous video. So I'm going to do annoyed head shake. And, you know, I can kind of scrub through and see what it looks like. And like I did in the last video, we're going to change it 24 frames per second. And we're going to show time as seconds. And we're going to keep this simple. For now, it's only five seconds. Uh, now, you could extend this, but we don't want to do that because, uh, well, unless you wanted to add an extra animation and you wanted the annoyed head shake for a lot longer, um, you know, and this is where you kind of have to use your judgment. And I'm going to show you how to blend these in. I'm going to shorten this one uh, because I think it's enough. And I, I, I haven't even selected the next clip, so... Uh, normally the kids would have done a script and they kind of have an idea of what the character is going to be doing so here is like being cocky again these are all mixamo animations and for now we're just working with mixamo to keep things simple um so you can enlarge your timeline just like you would in premiere pro so you can see a little closer the uh see there's like a, you can make them kind of overlap each other and what that does is it tries to match the two animations so that they don't look choppy and i found this is improved significantly so i don't know if it was with the last update but i find like look at it you can't even tell that there's two different animations the the bones are kind of like i don't know matched on almost automatically which is really great and so here we're going to let it continue scrubbing and i like the way that looks so uh you know you could string more than two for the purpose of this tutorial and we're just going to do uh, these two and you'll see when I get to the end it'll cut so what I'll do is that red line if you remember that's where the sequence will end so one of the things you should do is make sure you move that forward uh, otherwise you could cut it out in in your editing software but I think it's easier so I added a camera the first thing we want to do when we add a camera is name the camera and the easiest way is just cam 1 cam 2 cam 3 is the way I do it uh, you could probably use different ways. Uh, if you see, I just selected the uh, the camera on cam one, and now that's the camera that's active, okay? And you see, I also move the camera cut a little bit. If that would be, if I press play, you would see like a blank or it would just look wrong. Let's have a look here. This is what it would look like until the camera kicks in. So what you want to do is make sure your camera cuts is way at the beginning, and this is what you get a preview here of what you see so um i would recommend you get into the habit of using these keys they're very useful 
uh, to move back and forth. And right now I have the camera active. And what I'm going to do is using the right mouse clicks, WASD keys, place myself where I want to, to be. And, you know, like use the rule of thirds, use any composition training that we've covered or you've covered. Um, I'm not going to cover this in this video. Uh, you know, here's a mid shot. Looks good. And what I want to do is maybe right away uh, keyframe the camera. So that's where the camera starts. Now, if you forget to keyframe it and you move again, it'll, it'll, it'll be all messed up. So you need to make sure. Um, so I just selected that. I'm going to delete it and I'm actually going to change the camera settings first. And I like to shoot in 16 by 9 DSLR. So you have a larger sensor, looks a little nicer, talked about in the last video. It has a 35 millimeter lens, which is the standard lens on camera, which is kind of a boring lens. Technically, it still looks fine, but, you know, maybe you want to experiment uh, with that a little bit. Uh, but for this video, we're going to keep it simple and leave it at 35. Uh, if you don't want to get fancy with focus, you could leave it on disable, like I talked about in the last video. But in our case, we're going to go manual. We're going to use the uh, eyedropper tool to select it. And what it does is it makes the character in focus. Now, depending on your lens, maybe everything around it would be out of focus, sort of a, a depth of field effect, uh, which maybe you want because it definitely looks really cool and cinematic. Um, so I'm going to now, you know, give me a second here. So I'm going to go to the camera track and I'm going to just make a keyframe and I'm going to move up and maybe just do a camera move or something simple. Let's just zoom it in a little bit again. Right mouse click W key and make sure you have your speed at two at the top. I'm going to click uh, keyframe here again. It might be a little bit out of focus. So you want to go to your manual focus and click on it because if you don't have um, the focus disabled, it'll go out of focus because it's not automatic. You're doing everything manually. OK, so I think that looks pretty good. So I'm going to make a second camera and right away name it cam two. You don't want to waste, forget to do that because it gets really confusing. And I always manually name my cameras. And what we want to do now is. Uh, give me a second here. Yeah, we're going to go to the top. We're going to create a camera cut and the camera cut is right under camera cuts. Select your cam two. And for now, it'll have whatever you move your camera as. I'm going to go a little bit behind where I press play. And a second here. I make sure that's selected because I'm working in cam two right now. And if you still had cam one, it wouldn't do, uh, it would not work. And I'm going to do a shot from above. And as you can see in my scene, there's some objects that maybe I should have deleted, but I'll find the shot I'm looking for. Just trying to create a little bit sort of like a cinematic, get people interested in the scene, have something going on that might interest them. And the animation looks pretty good. As you can see, it's out of focus. So we're going to need to fix that. And then we'll do that in a second here. So go to the beginning clip, move back just a little bit. This is, you're still with camera two selected, right? So make sure that's the case. As you can see, my camera two is selected. And the first thing we're going to do is I'm not going to change uh, the focal length. That'll be maybe in another video. Um, I click on the camera, make sure it's a manual, which is or, or change it. And here I need to change this to DSLR, which is what I did in the last uh, video. So you want to have the same kind of uh, camera settings if you can across your you could play around with this, but I, I think, you know, that's a good sensor. Look, looks good. Just leave it. So I just clicked right before uh, where I want the camera to start. It looks pretty good. Uh, now I'm going to go and click the, uh, the eyedropper tool focus on this character. And now I need to also do my focus again before the scene starts. So as you remember, I had moved it back. Looks pretty good. If I had more motion, I would again need to create another keyframe, but I don't have any more motion in here. So we're probably pretty good. 
And now I'm going to click on the camera track so you can see what the final output would look like. So using the arrow two, I'll go back to the beginning. You could just scrub or press the space bar and it'll play. Looks pretty good. Short, short clips. This is what I recommend. And you know, under uh, the movie render queue, which works okay. I do a 4k export and it remembers the settings. There's no volume, ex excuse me, exported out. So you need to uh, do that in Premiere Pro or wherever. You'll click save. 